So taking our understanding of adding up electric field like vectors, we're going to expand into 2D problems, such as this case. Remembering, of course, that the electric field is just your electric force divided by your charge, which is a scalar quantity. When we add up electric field, it's just like adding up forces. We decompose into x and y, recompose, etc., etc. And for point charges, we can further know that the magnitude here is given by this expression right here. So instead of doing all the hard work of listing all the x and y with all the numbers, sometimes knowing some symmetry can help us develop a bit of a shortcut. And let's kind of set up the stage here. So here, they have given me some positive charges. So C and D are both plus 1. And then A and B are minus 1s, all the same size. On top of that, they're specifically asking for the middle. Now I'm going to snub out this thing in the middle here because it looks like another charge. What they're saying is there's point P in the middle and that's all we care about. So I'm just going to really ugly cover that with point P. And then we can establish that RA is that long, RB is that long, RC is that long, oops that's RC is that long and RD is that long. And you can see that the size of RA is equal to the size of RB, it's equal to the size of RC, it's equal to the size of RD. In this case, because we want the center of the square. And on top of that, we also can see from the four charges that the magnitude of QA is equal to the magnitude of QB, is equal to the magnitude of QC, is equal to the magnitude of QD. So that's where all the symmetry comes in. And we can use that to reason out and simplify a lot of things actually. Having the same R and the same Q and then the same constant means that EA, EB, EC, ED, they must all have the same magnitude as well. But for the direction, they point in all kinds of ways, so it's not necessarily zero. Let's work out the direction. Well, from QA, a negative charge, all electric field points towards the negative charge. So bam, 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 bam. There. On point P, there's EA. And then over here, same thing, there's also a negative charge. And it's going to be the exact same size. Now we move on to C. C is a positive charge, so it goes away from it. But it's still the same size as the other two, because it's the same charge and the same distance away. Same thing with D. And when we add these up, you would really break them down to x and y. Just like forces, but because of their sizes, you see that this component cancels so that component, and also this component cancels so that component because they're in opposite direction and equal size. And then this one length here, that's the same as this one, the same as this one, the same as that one. So you have four times whatever this one length is, and they all point up. So you know that by symmetry, quote unquote, you know that. The total electric field points upwards. And that you see how that might save us a lot of work in terms of not having to deal with the, uh, let's say, x component and only having to deal with the y component, etc., etc. That's a little bit of a qualitative showing of how to work with summing up electric fields in 2D, but let's go a little more quantitative and do the actual question itself. And again, since we've got all the direction drawn out on the diagram, we can work out the magnitude separately first. And for the magnitude, according to this, all you care about is the magnitude of the charge and also the magnitude of the radius, regardless of the direction. So using geometry, we know that this here is, they say, 5 centimeter. And this being a square, this is going to be perfectly perpendicular and that's 45 degrees. So we know that RA is equal to the size of RA anyway. It's 5 cosine 45 in centimeters. 
So let's change that to 0 0.05 cosine 45 meters. Then we can work out the magnitude by subbing everything in. K we know already. I'm not going to write it again here. Q is 1 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. Then we have 0 0.05 cosine 45 meters all square. And getting a little more space. That works out to some fairly big number, which I'm not really sure about. But let's put in the direction. And we know it goes that way. And that's for my EA. My EB will follow the same exact steps with the same exact distances. So the magnitude is going to be the same. Except the direction goes out of the way, 45 degrees. And you can imagine that's the same for C and D. Now, to look at the total electric field, we would have to add up all four forces. And because they're vectors, you can look at it graphically and add them up head to tail, head to tail. So you have EA, EB, and you know that this is going to perfectly cancel out. And then you have EC and ED. And again, that those two perfectly cancels out. So then the overall magnitude will be this big. And because we've reasoned out that all the X component cancels out, so we don't care about the X component. All we have to do is add up EAY, EBY, ECY, EDY. And how big is EAY? Well, we know that there's a 45 degrees there, so EAY must be EA cosine 45 degrees. And similarly, EBY, ECY, EDY is, is EB cosine 45, EC cosine 45, go to ED cos 45. Sorry, it's a little messy, but you can see that they're all the same, and they all go up. So when you add them all up, that's just four times whatever your EA is, the size of EA, times cosine 45 degrees. Still going up. So having a picture with all the electric fields drawn out can often save you quite a bit of work by exploiting any symmetry in the case if there is symmetry. If not, you just have to go through the due diligence of finding out all the direction, getting all the specific angle, getting the magnitude using kq over r square, and then just add them up in x and y. One thing I will caution you, however, is don't get mixed up in the direction of the radius with the direction of the field. You can't break down the radius into parts and then do each of these separately. You have to have to work out the overall magnitude first and then break it down using a triangle. Even though it looks tempting that you can just say, oh, well, this must be RBX and RBY. Don't do that because that'll get you the wrong answer. The magnitude of the electric field around point force depends on the distance between them because of the square. So you have to treat that separately. Get the magnitude first, then break it down. Polishing this up, the overall number ends up to be that. So if you plug in all the numbers, you should get that without any trouble. And of course, being a vector, you have to say it goes up. And that's adding up electric fields in 2D. Just not much different from any 2D vector addition, other than the fact that we have to work out the magnitude using this lovely formula.